Oh yes, the good old Ultima Online. An excellent game and time sink. You see, as a kid, you most likely don't mind how you spend the time, as long as it's fun. But when you wise up, you do mind. In Ultima Online, you had lots of skills that you could level up, but doing so took a lot of time and most of the time it was tedious. In this example, you will see fishing. To fish, at least back then, you needed to equip a fishing pole, double click on it and then click on the water to cast the line, to fish. Then wait a couple of seconds and if you caught something, you maybe got a fraction of a skill point. And then repeat the whole process again. It was the same thing with healing when using bandages, except the bandages were very tiny inside the backpack, so you had to be very precise to double click them. And also, you had to be wounded if you wanted to heal. Point being, it was a pain in the butt. So what did we do? We used macros and leveled overnight. Which brings me to the topic of this video. Macros and automation outside of games. What tools can you use and what can you do with macros? Well, you can automate tedious tasks like copying things from one Excel table to another, but you will know best what you actually want to automate. I will give you a quick demo, but first let's take a look at the tools you can use. If you search for macro recorder, this one will pop up on the list because of its SEO and the name. Now you can use it in Windows and Mac. You can give it a try, I didn't. And also if you go to the purchase, it is a little bit expensive, at least in my opinion, but that will depend on what you actually want to do. Because inside here you can also do things with imaging, text, barcodes, etc. Now let's take a look at the free options. On macOS you have Keysmith. Now I can't test this one because I don't have a Mac, but it is free. If you go down, you'll see that you have a generous free version, so you have no time limit and you can have up to five macros at a time. Then on Linux, you also have a bunch of options and I also can't test these ones since I don't have Linux. So we'll take a look at the Windows option and it's a free one. The tool that you'll use is AutoHotkey. Now when you do download AutoHotkey, make sure that you download the version 1.1 now the auto hotkey by itself doesn't do anything. We actually need to use scripts. And the script that I've used, or well found, is this one. I will leave the link down below. And the one that I've used is not this one. I've used the one below that is a bit modified. This one is version 2.1. And the one below is version 2.1 plus. So you can either download it or select the whole text you can also click select all and copy the text and make sure that you have auto hotkey installed. So I made a folder for the auto hotkey scripts. You'll want to give it a name and have the .ahk extension. If you don't see the extensions, so let me make a file. You'll go to new text file. If you don't see extensions, you'll want to go to view, options, change folder settings, view, and go to this one, hide extensions for known file types, make sure that it is unchecked, otherwise the extensions will be hidden, as you can see. Then you will simply paste the text in, and let me open this one in notepad. So this is the code, you can go over it if you want. And let me delete this file. But once you have the script, you can simply double click it and it will run. Now you can immediately notice something. We have a bunch of buttons. When you press F1, it records the whole screen. If you use F2, it records a window. Now I didn't use the window option, so I don't know how you specify which window it captures. F3 stops recording and with F4, you can play the macro that you made. So I have a sample Excel table here and let's say that I want to copy the lines from this column to another one. Now when I use my mouse scroll wheel, you'll notice that this moves it by two rows. So I could copy two rows at once, but I'll do it one row at a time. So let's press record. 
as you can see it's recording. Now first I'll select a line, copy it, I'll paste it maybe to D, repeat the process with the next one, paste it, and then I have to scroll down once. And this will be my macro, so I can stop it, and if I play it, it will do exactly as I have done. Now this is doing it automatically, and it is doing it twice as fast as I have done while recording. Now, if you like the macro what it does, you can go to edit, you can change the play speed, by default this is 2, if you want to slow it down, you'll have to put in less than 2, let's go maybe with 10. You can here set the loops, by default this will run one time, so let's go with 10 times, and here you have the pauses. A sleep is a pause, and this is in milliseconds, so this was sleeping for 5.6 seconds. Let's go with 100 milliseconds, something like that, for all of the sleep actions. And I'll just leave the last one at 1 second for now. Press Ctrl S to save. And now we can test this out by pressing play or just F4. And when you play the macro, if you used your mouse to make it, don't move it, otherwise you'll mess with the macro. So I'll press F4. And as you can see, it's doing it automatically and it will do it for 10 cycles. So we started at this point and we have 12 elements in total. Now that was simply how you can use it. What happens with the macro if you close it? Well, before you do, go to options. You can export the macro once you have it set up. So with all of the changes that we've made, you can export I already have one, and then you would import this macro and play it again. Now you don't have to use this macro or the script, because if you make your own when you export it, it looks exactly like it did before. So we have a bunch of mouse clicks. This is the X and Y position on the screen. It does a mouse click, and in this case I've only used mouse clicks. Now the only thing that you have to know is this script runs once, so if you don't want to have it loop in the background and only run when you press a key, you would have to change this script a little bit. Now if you want to know how to do that, AutoHotKey has a good community and you will find a bunch of scripts, so you don't even need to know how to code to get the job done. And in my next video, I'll show you how we can change the character level styling in DaVinci Resolve using a script. And if you found this video helpful, you know what to do. I'm Simon, and until next time, Jackal, keep it digital.